When should you stop your birth control and what you should know about when you are ready to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford and welcome back to the channel. This is a channel to talk all about your body and your fertility. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I'm a fertility doctor, so I talk about this every single day. Would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. That way you can get to know more of these videos and know when we're releasing new information. I get asked all the time about that transition from preventing a pregnancy into wanting to become pregnant. And to be honest, there is so much information that people don't know or that I wish they knew if they were transitioning from their contraception on to let's track our cycles and let's see what's going on. The first thing to know is we're gonna dive through a few different types of contraception really quickly and what I want you to know when you're stopping them and starting to track. So the first thing to know is that, let's start with condoms. Condoms are not any type of hormonal contraception. They are purely just a barrier method. Meaning if you've been using condoms for protection, and we'll go ahead and put in like the withdrawal method with this too, nothing is changing with your body, right? So if your periods are already not regular and you're wanting to get pregnant, you should go see a doctor before you start trying because that's just gonna lead to frustration if you are skipping months or having very irregular periods. I know we don't always love having a period. It's not fun to have cramps or PMS symptoms or bleed, but it is normal to have a regular predictable period somewhere that comes about every month. Now, what's normal for you may be different than what's normal for everybody else. So the entire range that we usually say is normal is somewhere from 24 to 35 days, but it should be relatively the same. So it should be 24, 25, 26 days, 27, 28, 29, 32, 33, 34. Shouldn't be 24 one month, then 35, then 27, then 39. That, that's irregular. So if you're skipping months or you're having irregular periods, and there's not an explanation for that because you're not using any type of hormones, go get an evaluation right away. Don't pass go. And then we'll go ahead and put the copper IUD there. So we'll just dive in with IUDs. IUDs are intrauterine devices. These are small little devices that are shaped like a T that can go inside your uterus. The nice thing about an IUD is that they are a very effective contraceptive option at preventing a pregnancy. And there's different types. So there's progesterone based IUDs. That's going to be your Mirena, Kylena, Lyletta, Skyla. There's a bunch of different ones. Then there's also going to be your copper. Now the copper IUD works by essentially creating an inflammatory environment inside the uterus that prevents fertilization from happening. However, the copper IUD has some side effects and one of those can be heavy bleeding, but it does not impact ovulation at all. So same rules apply. You should already have a normal and regular predictable period pattern. You pull out the copper IUD and you can get pregnant immediately because the copper IUD does not have a negative impact on the lining like we might see with the progesterone IUDs. There are different types of progesterone IUDs. It's about how big they are and how much progesterone they contain in them. This is a slow release of progesterone and that progesterone is working primarily at changing the lining of the uterus. Remember that in a normal cycle, the uterine lining is exposed to estrogen only, then you ovulate, then it has estrogen and progesterone, and then if you're not pregnant, your progesterone drops and you get a period. So if you have an IUD in place, then what's happening is you have a constant progesterone exposure, and that constant progesterone is causing the lining to change and thin out. This can be a nice thing about having a progesterone IUD is that your periods might become very light, very just spotty, or they may go away entirely. And that is okay in the context of having an IUD because we're not worried about it since we know why it's happening. That being said, sometimes the progesterone IUDs do inhibit ovulation, so you may or may not ovulate on it. And if you have amenorrhea or no period on the IUD, we don't really know what your ovulatory pattern is. If you have an IUD that's progesterone and you're still having a regular period that's pretty normal every month, then you can pull it out and you just start trying right away. There's no prep work that you need to do. However, if your periods are gone, you have no periods or you just have intermittent random spotting, then I recommend that you remove that IUD about three to six months before you wanna get pregnant. That's gonna give your body some time to ovulate and regrow that lining from that estrogen only exposure. And if your periods are not normal by the end of that time frame, then you should go see your OBGYN or a fertility doctor to try to figure out what might be going on and why your periods 
are not regular. That's not a side effect of the IUD. It's not the IUD didn't cause it, but it's just this is now your underlying period pattern, and we want to help that out so that you can go and get pregnant. Now, if we go on other progesterone only options, we have the implant, which goes in your arm, like Nexplanon or Implanon. Now, this is a different dose of progesterone, and it works by preventing ovulation. It does have the negative side effect of spotting or abnormal bleeding, but when you remove it, you've got to give your body some time to get back into ovulation. So I usually recommend that one coming out about three months before you want to get pregnant. The depo Provera shot. Okay, this is probably one of the things that I am always surprised that we never talk to patients about. The depo Provera shot, that's the shot for birth control. High dose progesterone only shot. It has its own slew of side effects, weight gain and osteoporosis with long-term use. But it is a very high dose of progesterone that prevents ovulation for three months. So if you're using the shot for birth control, it has a very high efficacy of preventing ovulation for three months. So you go get the shot every three months to prevent getting pregnant. However, those very high progesterone doses may inhibit ovulation for up to 18 months, a year and a half. And so I want you to stop the depo Provera shot at least a year and a half before you want to try to get pregnant. So that is an option for somebody who's very remote from childbearing. But if you think maybe in the next couple of years we want to start trying, Depo is not for you, or you should stop and transition to a different form of contraception. All right, so this is going to bring us to birth control pills. So when we say birth control pills or the pill, for the most part, we're talking about the combined estrogen progesterone pill. Nowadays, there are so many different versions of this. So ethanol estradiol is the estrogen in the pill, and it comes in different doses. So you have a standard dose, you have a high dose pill that we don't really use anymore, and then you have a low dose and a low, low dose. And then you have a variety of different progesterones. I will say the side effects from the birth control pill when people have side effects are typically from these different progesterones. So if you want to use the pill for contraception, and you don't really tolerate one because of some of the side effects, you can always try a different combination of these medications. Now, the pill is very short acting, and I think this is a big misnomer, and I've seen a lot of people trying to take advantage and tell you that the birth control pill lives in your system for a very long time, and you need to buy their cleanse or their supplement or something to flush it out of your system. But think about this. The pill is taking estrogen and progesterone. That estrogen is stopping the brain from sending out FSH. If you miss a pill dose, you could ovulate. So this pill is not living in your body for an extended amount of time. Now, however, it does inhibit your ovulation. So when that's how it works, that's why it's a good contraceptive. But when you stop it, what's going to happen is that your brain then has to wake up because your pituitary gland has been suppressed by the pill, and now it needs to send out FSH and get an egg to grow. And so that, in theory, could take a little bit of time depending on how long you've been on the pill. So I usually say stop the pill about three months before you want to get pregnant. Use another form of contraception, like a condom or barrier method or calendar tracking, but you want to watch those cycles. You definitely can get pregnant before for like the month you stop your pill. So do not take this as you can't get pregnant for three months. But I usually say, hey, if you think you're gonna start trying to get pregnant three months from now, go ahead and pull off the pill now and give yourself a few months to watch your cycle. And the reason why that's important is that the pill also increases something called sex hormone binding globulin, which binds testosterone and lowers testosterone. That's why dermatologists love the pill for your skin and to treat acne. But when you come off the pill, you're going to have a reverting to whatever your baseline hormones are. So a lot of people in this generation have been on the birth control pill for a long time, and they may not know that they have underlying PCOS or some ovulatory defect, or they had an eating disorder and they have functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, but they've been using the birth control pill, so they've still been getting periods because they're supplementing. So when you stop the pill, you should get your period back and it should come regular. And if it doesn't, and you're at that three month mark, please go get evaluated. And if you start to notice 
your period might be regular that first time and then it starts to get longer and longer or you start to have an increase in acne, that might represent an underlying PCOS or hormone disorder. This is what your OBGYNs and your REIs are here for. Pro tip is if you have something abnormal with your period, don't just wait to go to your OB at your annual and then try to bring it up because those visits are not scheduled for that. Call the office and schedule a problem-focused visit. I'm having an irregular period, or I'm worried I might have PCOS, or I need a preconception visit. That's going to help your doctor know what to focus. And you can always come see a fertility doctor. You don't have to wait for a referral or you don't have to be trying for a certain amount of time. I do fertility testing and talk to patients who are concerned about period abnormalities and getting pregnant every day. The other thing to note is that the birth control pill does not have a post birth control pill syndrome. Again, it's just representing whatever is really going on in your body. You just may not have had that diagnosed before you got started on it, which I agree is a problem in our current medical system. And also the birth control pill does not make you run out of eggs faster or harm your future fertility. In fact, long-term studies even show that the longer people use the pill, the more fertile they were when they came off of it. And the hypothesis here is that the pill was preventing progression of endometriosis and potentially helping them not have scar tissue or other inflammatory issues. Hypothetical, but the proof was there. Long-term pill use did not harm. Last thing about the pill is that you can use it so you still bleed monthly. Remember, that is just a progesterone withdrawal bleed by stopping the pill or going into those placebo days. Or you can use it continuous where you truly take an active pill every day and you never have a period, which is great if you don't want to have a period and you don't want to get pregnant. In those cases, I do like you to come off the pill three to six months because that constant daily progesterone exposure, just like the IUD, is causing that lining to be super thin and we really do need a few months to get it to grow back. So you might not get a period the first month even if you ovulate or it might be spotty because the lining has not quite had time to regenerate. All right, well, I hope this video helped. If you are looking at trying to get pregnant and thinking about your contraception and how you're gonna transition from your contraception to your tracking, I definitely recommend that you use some type of app to track your cycles, even if it's to the calendar in your phone, but something to mark full flow, spotting, and when your periods are starting and ending, and that is going to help you determine your fertile days. I do have an entire video on tracking your cycle and how to determine what your fertile days are, so you can go ahead and go and check that out. As always, I appreciate you here. Thank you so much for your support. You can listen to the As Woman podcast for more fertility-related information or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends. <music>